Now to some people this might seem really extreme to go that far to create like this, yeah, cable caster. But for those that kind of know, you'll kind of know why I did this. You know, it's a Sunday, the shops opened at 12. I was hoping to do this in, in a single day, maybe it'll take a little longer. It kind of centers around this problem I'm having with light stands in general. This one's quite nice, this is from Newer. It's the heavy duty version, I'm not sure if you can buy it still. It has some nice wheels under there, everything's really nice and solid. As soon as you move location, go through a hallway or something, you need to retract this thing. It kind of bundles up right here. And when you're at the next scene, you try to go out again and, you know, you snag and you can press it forward, but it's just very awkward. Do that a couple of times and it just becomes really annoying. And so I bought some of these ball bearings, which will be like the casters essentially that will clamp onto the pole and guide that yeah, piece of cable without too much resistance. Let's call it a cable caster. It doesn't have to be complex either, like what I really like to use is Shaper 3D. It's a very intuitive app on the iPad. Another thing you might need is a caliper. So this one's actually for my great granddad. It's, I believe it's almost like 40, like over 40 years old at this point. This application is really awesome. Sometimes it does crash, but I've never had it uh, that actually deletes a file or it corrupts a file. So overall it's very reliable. And I'm working on an iPad Pro M1. Is it an M1? Yeah, I think it's an M1. There we go. And then we can retract this from every single one. There we have it. Not too sure how thick a cable tie is, but I'm hoping this is big, like enough width to accommodate one. And really, we can just send this to the printer right now just to check as a prototype, does this work? And what are any potential pitfalls? Because I know that, you know, we can add more time into this model, but there's going to be something wrong with it. So everything is printed out. It took about half an hour and also printed out these tiny little plugs for the ball bearings which fit exactly. And that allows these M5 nuts to be inserted in the middle without it like wobbling all over the place. That will be quite essential here. If you're enjoying the video so far give it a like or leave a comment as well. It's uh, probably the best thing you could do. If not also let me know. I mean, this is uh, more of a test than anything else. At the moment, I don't have bolts on it, so... How is that so loose? What did I screw up that it's so loose? Alright, so the first design wasn't all too bad. I had a few flaws which I'm going to fix right here, just by making these about one millimeter thinner. So it's actually pulling against each other in a bit. Maybe one millimeter is too much, but we'll see. I think I'll be okay. This is working out way better. As you can see, it's not really dropping down, but I think, you know, you can like pull it. That would be perfect. It's a little bit tight, but... Right, so this was supposed to be like a single day build project, which it still is in terms of hours, but I just wanted to showcase how fast you can turn an idea into something that seems like a real product. And one extra step we could take is to send it off to PCBWay, the channel sponsor, and have it printed in something really awesome like metal. 
PCBWare offers a lot of services from PCB production and assembly, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and of course also 3D printing, which is what we'll be using here today. You can just drag and drop the file, they quote you with an instant price. You just submit the request and we'll see what arrives in the mail a couple days later. Right, so it's been a couple days, received a package from PCBWare. Actually, I'm not entirely sure if it's been a couple of days. I've been busy with a lot of different projects in the meantime. But uh, yeah, the parts came out really beautifully. This is uh, aluminium and that is really strong. It's going to look like it's just part of the tripod, to be honest. Now, I didn't do the most beautiful design job on these because this is going to be sticking out quite a lot. Right, so I thought I'd just put it completely together so you can kind of see what it what it looks like. And I'll leave a link to the project file down below to PCBWay's um, project page, which is pretty awesome. You should check it out. There's a lot of interesting stuff on there. Right, so this is a bit of a weird camera angle. I've been doing multiple different projects at the same time, which to some extent is quite fun because, you know, when you get bored of editing, you just uh, do some more building, that kind of stuff. But it's also been kind of a hassle with setups and stuff. Now to some people this might seem really extreme to go that far to create like this, yeah, cable caster. But for those that kind of know, you'll kind of know why I did this because Sometimes you're on set, it's just up high, you know, and you need to extend it a little further or uh, kind of stuff, and then it snags up and you have to take the whole thing down again. This is going to save so much time in that regard. I'm not saying you can't do that with cable ties, but yeah, often to, I've, I've just had a really bad track record with cable ties. They've always snagged up the cables uh, for me. 